The next section is called cytokine related diseases and there's a lot of uh, a lot of stuff going on in there. There's there's cytokines as you know from the questions on the last test about super antigens. Uh, cytokines can cause different types of shock because cytokines can cause degranulation of certain types of cells and they can reach levels of toxicity if they're not kept in in place. Um, in the case of bacteria, septic shock can develop basically because the bacterial cell walls have something known as endotoxins. This usually only occurs in gram-negative bacteria because they have an outer membrane that contains the LPS, the lipopolysaccharides. These LPS uh, molecules, when they leave, they can cause degranulation, they can cause release of um, higher levels of tumor necrosis factors uh, and other interleukin related uh, molecules. So septic shock can be one of, sepsis can be one of the, the end products of this kind of overactivation. Uh, read very carefully through this section. There are certain types of cancers that are associated with uh, increased levels or decreased levels of, of different interleukins or their receptors. Um, there are certain lymphoid and myeloid cancers like uh, certain leukemias, lymphomas, and uh, then other myeloma type cancers that are associated there, especially with IL-6. IL-6 is one that is usually associated with stress and sepsis. Um, so there are a lot of pharmaceutical companies that are trying to come up with methods of trying to block these IL-6 molecules from being able to function properly. So if you have a patient that comes into the hospital and they're really, they're shocky and they're, um, they're, they're, they're fighting blood pressure fluctuations and heart rate fluctuations and they're just getting weaker and weaker, if you could block the IL-6 uh, by injecting an antagonist or by blocking the receptors in some way, you might be able to get the blood pressure fluctuations back under control. And that's an interesting one. Now let's see, this says something about Chagas disease. Chagas is caused by a parasite. The parasite is in the Trypanosoma group. Trypanosoma cruzi is the one in South America. The one in Africa is Trypanosoma uh, gambiensia, uh, and it causes African sleeping sickness. But the one in South America can, uh, can actually affect the immune system it produces an antigen, a mitogen, or whatever you want to call it, um, for a monoclonal antibody-like molecule. Basically, um, it has a high affinity for IL-2 receptors. Uh, it can affect the way that T. cruzi... <laughs> I'm not saying this right. Uh, T. cruzi thus suppresses one of the particular subunits and this suppression across the, the whole body makes the, the immune system less likely to attack the parasite. So the parasite basically becomes invisible because of the way it's attacking. Um, pardon me. Sorry about that. The, I was talking about uh, Chagas disease, uh, Trypanosoma cruzi, and basically it downregulates uh, the production of, of one of those uh, subunits of the IL-2 receptor. And the exact mechanism is not known, but by downregulating this, then you're not going to have complete receptors being produced, and thus it hides from the immune system. Um, it's very similar to something that happens in certain kinds of leukemias.